Hi everyone. In this bite-sized bit, we are going to talk about how we can write code that allows us to store information to an external data file and retrieve that information from that external data file so that the data we're manipulating in our programs has long-term storage and memory. Let's go ahead and get started. In the last few videos, we worked through the process of creating our product maintenance project, which stores a variety of different products on a list box on our form and in a list behind the scenes. We also added a validator class to manage validation for when the user enters new products. We're going to manipulate this program to add external data storage for our products so that when we add products and then close the form, the next time we open the form, any new products we added will still be stored. And likewise, if we delete or modify any products, when we close the form and then come back to it in a few minutes or hours or days, the changes we made are still stored in the data. This is the first time in this class that we've actually manipulated data that has long-term storage that doesn't reset when the program stops. So this is a major step forward in terms of what we can accomplish with our programs. In order to manipulate external data files, we need some fairly sophisticated code. And rather than write this code from scratch, I'm going to provide it to you. Outside of Visual Studio, on eCampus, you can find some product maintenance files. And the files I'm interested in today are the product DB C sharp file and the products XML document. The product db.cs file is actually code that I've written that you can use in your program. And the products XML file is a data source for products that already exist in a database that we can then add to, remove from, or manipulate. I want to add these two files to our project. And the way I'm going to do so is highlighting these two files in Windows Explorer, right-clicking and copying them, and then going to my product maintenance container folder, and then entering the rarely entered working folder, where we see all of the files we've used inside Visual Studio, and pasting. So you can see that I've added the products XML document to this folder, and I've added the database file to this folder. It's important that any files that you want to manipulate inside your program exist inside this working folder. This location is relative to your program. So wherever your program is installed, this is the default location where it's going to look for resources. If your resources are anywhere else on your computer, say in your My Documents folder or a Downloads folder or your desktop, that's specific to your computer. And if somebody else tries to run your program on their computer, they probably won't be able to access those files because they aren't located in the same place. If you put resources inside the working folder, they move with the program and the program will always be able to find them. So please make sure you place resources in this working folder for every program that you write in order to make sure that it will run on anyone's computer. Now that I've added those files to my working folder, I need to return to Visual Studio and add them to my actual project. And the way we're going to do so is by clicking on the project menu and adding an existing item. The default location for any existing item is your product maintenance working folder. And so here are all the files that already exist. And I just added a product DB file and I'm going to add that to my project. And over on my Solution Explorer, you'll see that product DB is now listed. I want to add the database file as well. So I'm going to repeat that step by clicking on project and I'm going to click on add existing item and I won't see the XML document at first, and that's because there's a filter for C-sharp files. But if I drop down on that list and choose data files, which is my third choice, I'll then see my product's XML file, and I can add it. 
and now an XML file will show up in my Solution Explorer and I'll have access to it in my program. There are a few more things that we need to do to get those new files up and running inside our project. If you open the product DB file, you'll see that it has the namespace product maintenance and it has some errors already showing up. It doesn't see things like product. And that's because our namespace in our forms and this namespace in this class that I just added are different. In my program, my namespace is Boon Ted Product Maintenance, but this is the generic namespace Product Maintenance. You need to get them all working together so they all need to be in the same namespace. I'm going to suggest that you go in and change the namespace of the Product DB to Boon Ted or your last name, your first name. And then just to be on the safe side, click on the light bulb and rename everything that might have Product Maintenance to your last name, your first name, product maintenance. And you can see that as soon as I did that, all of the errors go away. Everything in my program now has the same namespace and everything can talk to one another. I certainly could have gone the other direction. I could have gone into my forms and changed their namespace to just product maintenance and removed my last name and first name, and then used the light bulb to do a rename everywhere throughout my project. And really it doesn't matter, as long as you have consistent namespace for all of your various classes and forms, everything will work nicely. We don't need to change anything about the code that's provided in this class. It consists of two methods that we're interested in. Get products, which will retrieve information from our XML database and return it as a list of products and save products, which will take a list of products and store it out to our XML database. I'm not going to go into the specifics of how these methods operate. We're just going to use them without delving into exactly how they work. The other file you might want to take a look at is the products XML file. This is not C -sharp code. This is XML, which is somewhat similar to an HTML document. This contains data that is readable by programming languages. In this case, I have a series of products. Each product has an open and close tag, product and slash product. Each product has a code and a description and a price, and you can see the opening and closing tags for each of those. And I have multiple products that I've already set up inside this database. So this is just a starting point, and this is where we're going to store information outside of our program so that when we return to the program at a later time, the data that we manipulated the last time will still be there. Now that we've added the product DB class and the products XML document, let's talk about how we will manipulate our existing code to take advantage of an external database. I'm going to my product maintenance form and examining the code behind it. You'll recall that when we first created the code for this form, we made up a couple of products, product one and product two, and then inside our load method for our form, we added them to our list before we filled our list box. We're not gonna do that anymore. We're gonna replace some of that code. I'm gonna remove product one and product two completely. And instead of adding product one and product two to our list, I'm going to read that information in from our database. So our LST products is going to be equal to product db dot get products. And get products does not have any parameters associated with it. This will read information from our XML document, bring that information in as a list, and store it wherever we want which in our case is our local list of products. And once we've done so, we're gonna fill our product list box. Let's see the result of this code. I'm gonna click Start. And what we see on our product maintenance form are the four books that were already stored in my XML document. I read them into my list, and then I outputted them to my list box. And now I can see all of them. Let's make some other changes to our code to reflect what we want to do if the user adds products 
or deletes products. For our add product button, remember that what we did is opened up the new product form, let the user enter information, and then if they did actually enter a proper set of code and description and price on that form, we stored that information as a new product on our list inside our code, and then we filled in our product list box. I'm going to add one more step. In addition to adding information to our list of products inside our code, I'm also going to store that information in my external database. Product DB dot save products and specifically I'm going to save my list of products. So think about these three lines of code. The first one updates our internal data source, our list of products inside C Sharp. The second updates our external data source, our XML file that is stored outside of our program. And the third updates the form that the user sees. So we output our list to our list box on our form. What about when we delete a product? If the user successfully deletes a product, what we did before is removed it from our list and then updated our list box. I'm going to add one more step productdb.save products, and we're going to save our list of products to our XML file. The same logic that we pursued in the add products button, we're going to pursue in the delete products button. If we make a change to our list of books, first we change the list that's stored internally in C Sharp, then we save the list to our external database, XML, and then we finally update the visual aspect the user can see on the form. So internal data, external data, visualization of the data. Let's test these two new features. I'm going to run my program. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a new product. I'm going to add a Ruby on Rails textbook. I'm going to save that book and I'm going to see that book show up on my product maintenance form. What else happened? Well, if our program's working correctly, we didn't just show that book on our list box. We also stored it in our list behind the scenes, and we stored it to our XML file on our computer. Let's prove that. If I go out to my working folder on my computer, and I find my product's XML document, and I take a look at it, I can see a new book inside my XML document, specifically my Ruby on Rails book. What if we delete a product? I'm going to remove the Java programming book. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to click delete product. And I'm going to answer yes. I see that that book has disappeared from my list box. What should have also happened is it should be gone from the list behind the scenes and it should be gone from my XML document. Let's prove that. The Java book is now gone. And here's perhaps the most important part of this program. If I exit the program and I exit Visual Studio and then I rerun that program minutes or days or weeks or years later, when I run this program, the data that we're manipulating starts where we left off. I've removed the Java book and I've added the Ruby on Rails book and both of those changes are still reflected in our program. So we now have long-term storage of the data that we're manipulating in our programs, which is a very significant step forward in terms of what we can do with our programming language. One last note. I showed you how I added the product DB class to an existing project. You could certainly add an existing product class or an existing validator class from another project to a new project if you wanted to by moving or copying those files into a working folder for a new project and then adding an existing file to your project. The one caveat is that you need to make sure that if you do so, you change the appropriate namespace to the common namespace you've already created for any existing forms. So I've provided a product class here 
but it has a generic namespace. If I added this, I wouldn't have had to program it. I could have just used what I've already created in the past, but I'd have to change the namespace to Boone Ted Product Maintenance to make sure that it is accessible to the rest of my program. Feel free to use the validator class you created in the last video in all of your programs. You can just copy and paste that class into your working folders for all of your other projects. You can change the namespace for that validator class, and then you can use it instead of local validator methods and still accomplish the same goal. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.